I titled this message, New is Not Improved. Turn to your neighbour and tell them, New is Not Improved. New is Not Improved. New is Not Improved. You know, the month of January is the inaugural month every year. It's the month of new beginnings. It's a month of New Year resolutions and New Year ambitions. In fact, I think it was halfway through this week, the gym was just packed. I don't know what it, what it was, but it was just packed. And it's where in January come that New Year's resolution, we, we get ambitious for things we want to do, things we want to achieve, or maybe we want to pick up where things were once left. January is the month where we relax. It's the time where we remember and thank God for what He's done, but also a season where we endeavour to figure out what we want to change in this year. Does anyone have things that they're believing for or wanting a change or, or speaking into action? Yeah. This is the self-improvement season. It is the vision board season. Who has a vision board? Anyone? A couple of you. It is the season where we are fully focused. I can see you, Daniel, as a vision board kind of person. No, just kidding. And at times we look into a new season as for ways to improve that 2023, the year was, but 2024 is my year. Or we are ambitious for what is to come. Yet the word improvement is not the God that we serve. I know many of us in the room, maybe we're praying that we would improve. Yet this year would be the year we improve ourselves or, or our marriages improve or our finances improve or, or we just want to improve. But you can't step into the new thing that God has for you trying to be a better version of you. I believe that God's not looking for a better version of you. God's looking for a you that has a completely different name, a you that has a completely different identity. He's not looking for a better you, but rather He's looking for a new you. You know, the Christian life, I believe, was never intended to be a place of playing it safe. It was never intended to be a predictable life, but rather the majority of us may feel more comfortable being in a safe life or being a predictable life. But I believe that the best Christian life will always be a life that is not safe. The best Christian life is a life or a walk of faith. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 7 says, For we walk by faith and not by sight. In the book of Genesis, if you have your Bibles, if you want to turn with me to Genesis 17 verse 15, we come across a passage of Scripture with two characters called Abraham and Sarah. And Sarah was barren until she was 90 years of age and God promised Abraham that she would be a mother of nations in Genesis 17 verse 16 and that she would conceive and bear a son. But rather Scripture states that Sarah did not believe. And Abraham was 10 years older than Sarah and assuming that Sarah had married at the average age in that era of 16 years of age, then by the time Ishmael was born through Haggai, Abraham and Sarah had possibly been married 60 years and still had no children through his wife, Sarah. Who knows, that's a long time. And in Genesis 17 verse 15, it says this in the whole minute. It says, God said to Abraham, As for your wife Sarai, do not call her Sarai, for Sarah will be her name. I will bless her indeed. I will give you a son by her. I will bless her and she will produce nations. Kings of people will come from her. Abraham fell face down. Then he laughed and said to himself, Can a child be born to a hundred year old man? Can Sarah, a 90 year old woman, give birth? So Abraham said to God, if only Ishmael were acceptable to you, God. But God said, no, your wife Sarah will bear you a son and you will name him Isaac. I will confirm my covenant with him as an everlasting covenant for his future offspring. As for Ishmael, I have heard you. I will certainly bless him and I will make him fruitful and will multiply him greatly. He will father 12 tribal leaders and I will make him into a great nation. But I will confirm my covenant with Isaac, whom Sarah will bear to you at this time next year. Imagine going to Christmas and there is your grandmother saying, I'd like to introduce you your... Imagine that. Imagine your, your grandparents, yeah, we're, we're pregnant, we're expecting. And imagine, imagine the excitement or Ma, Pastor Vi, imagine, I don't know, like God can do some pretty crazy things, hey. What about your mum? Oh, my mum, yeah, I'd love a sibling. That'd be pretty amazing. We could have them at the same similar times and 
Hey, can we all just reach our hands and pass the sand? Let's pray. <laughs> we believe in a God of miracles. But um, no, no. Zion, would you like an uncle? No, just kidding. Let's move on. But in the Old Testament, what I love about names and how God changed Abr- Abram to Abraham and Sarai to Sarah is that God gave them a new name for a new season. That it wasn't just, as you know, some days we can name children just because it's something that we like or it was the dog that we loved or whatever it may be, or it's just the trend. But, but names were biblical and they had a meaning, there was representation. But not only were they meaningful, but God always gave names for a new season. And in the Old Testament, names were bearers of a person's identity that when God changed a person's name and gave them a new name, it was to establish a new identity and a new season. That God changed Abram's name, meaning high father, to Abraham, which means the father of a multitude. And at the same time, God changed Abraham's wife, Sarai, meaning my princess, to Sarah, which means the mother of nations in Genesis 17, 15. And that is the God that we serve, that, that I believe that not only should you believe for improvement, but I believe that God wants to do something new rather than the improves. But as much as you would love to have an improved marriage or an improved job or improved finances or an improved life, I do believe that we restrict God to just restrict Him to an improvement rather than God doing something new. When you think of Abraham and Sarah, that they laughed at God at the fact that 90-year-old Sarah could bear a child. That for 60 years of marriage, that if it was possible, they thought God would have done it. But we serve a God of new beginnings and new seasons. That He's not restricted to your age, He's not restricted to your year, He's restricted to your belief and your faith, that you believe that God could do exceedingly abundantly more than you could ask, dream or imagine. Amen. And point number one is this, new is not improved. You know, there is a massive difference between improvement and innovation. Would anyone else agree? There is a difference between improvement or something new, innovation. There is something powerful about something that is innovative. You know, there is a company that I love called Apple. Um, I do love Apple. I have an iPad, I have an iPhone, I have their headphones. I do love their products. It is a great product. Is anyone else with me or no? And for anyone else who doesn't have an Apple, we pray for you that this year would be the year of just an awakening. And uh, Nigel, we pray for, no, I'm kidding. But Alan and Kelly, we pray for you for the awakening and and the realisation that God is on the throne. And that, yeah, anyway, I won't go on. But there is a company that I call, that's called Apple and it's been around for a very long time. And, and, and the creator of Apple was Steve Jobs, who was no longer with us. But Steve Jobs was a revolutionised technology, I believe, in the way that we function as a society today. Although he is not alive today, I believe that we are operating in technology that revolutionised the world because of him. Did you know that at one point, Apple was at the forefront of technology and innovation. And I still still believe they are. But they were at the forefront of technology and innovation. Apple was the first company to take a cell phone and an MP3 player and a camera and place all three into one device. I remember when I was younger and, and there used to be a phone for a phone, there used to be an MP3 player or a CD player or a cassette player. And then there was always mum and dad who had this big camera. It was just big. But then you could never carry your three things. You usually only could choose two. It was either the CD player or the phone, but you couldn't do all, th- all of them. One of them had to stay in the car or one of them had to stay at home. And there was a time for the young people who don't realise where a phone was a phone, a CD player was a CD player and a camera was a camera. And you carried a phone and you carried an MP3 player and when an iPod came out, it revolutionised music that it wasn't CDs and cassettes. And you carried that around just as an iPod to play your music and then you'd carry an MP3 player but you'd have to load your music onto it and... And gone were the days of carrying around just these boxes or CDs in your car. Everything was on this little device. And Steve Jobs took all three devices, combined them into one and he called it the iPhone. And it had a a phone, an MP3 player and a camera all in one. And the moment he brought it out, the whole world said, sign me up. 
And Apple literally changed the world, creating the world's first smartphone. It was revolutionary. And what I found amazing is that year after year, they release a version one iPhone, a version two, a version three, a version four. And every year those phones got better and better and better and more incredible and the cameras became just incredible that it eventually just took over the need for a a big camera. The cameras were so incredible. And what I found amazing is that I remember the day I would have been a teenager when the new version of an iPhone came out that you couldn't even get your hands on an iPhone for months. Does anyone remember that? Anyone? That there was a day where you couldn't even get your hands on a new iPhone. It was sold out everywhere that you couldn't get it from Optus, from Telstra, from Apple. You'd be waiting three to six months just to get one. In fact, there was a day and a time when people would line up outside Apple I remember our youth pastor got up at midnight, went to the Apple store, lined up and he came to church the next day at 6am with the new iPhone. And there were people who would actually sleep out the night waiting for the store to open just to get the new version 3 iPhone. Does anyone else remember? Is it just me? And those were the days when I was a teenager. It was revolutionary. Every year, the newest iPhone changed technology. It just literally, you couldn't fathom the technology. Why? Because it was innovative, it was new, it was something that wasn't done before. But what I found amazing is that they have a new iPhone 15 Pro. Does anyone have one? No. Brian, you don't have one? No. (laughs) And there's a new iPhone 15 Pro, but the reality is, is that no one has it. That if you want one, it is everywhere on the Apple store in every shop. It is stacked up high. It's not like the old days where you couldn't get it. You had to line up for it. You had to sleep outside the Apple store. That if you want the new iPhone 15 Pro, wherever you want it, you can have it. In fact, when the next one comes out, it'll be a 16. The day it gets released, you could probably just go to any store and just get it. Why? Because people got tired of improvement because they wanted something new. There was a time where the iPhone was so revolutionary, it was so new. Version 1 was new, version 2 was new, version 3 was so different to all of them. But then as time went on, as version 10 came out, version 11, version 12, they all became the same. In fact, the only thing that changed was the name and maybe a slightly better camera, although they could have put the better camera on last year's model. And the only reason why we tend to upgrade our phone is because every year they bring out a new software, it slows down all of our phones. (laughs) My phone was fine until I updated the software. And isn't it amazing that there was a day when iPhones, you, you couldn't get your hand on one because it was new, it was innovative, it was creative, it was something that was never done before. But there came a time as they released version 9, version 10, people got over it because they said, I I want something new. Isn't it amazing that when something's just improved, we don't want it. But when there's something new and it's exciting and it's something that hasn't been done and you can't get it, everyone wants it. And at times we're looking to the year 2024 saying, God, if you could improve my marriage, if you could improve my finances, if you could improve my life, without realising we're looking to God for improvement, yet we don't serve a God of improvement, we serve a God of brand new. Are you with me? Isaiah 43, 19 says, look, I'm about to do something new. Even now it is coming. Do you not perceive it? That is the God that we serve that God wants to do something new in your life, that what He did in 2023 was great, but what He wants to do in 24 is something you cannot even comprehend. That what God does in your life this year isn't dependent upon God, it's dependent upon your faith. That God said to Abraham and Sarah that you're gonna bear a child, but they said for 60 years, it hasn't happened. And God says, but watch what I'm going to do. 
But what I love is that in Isaiah 43, 19, as he says, look, do not perceive, I'm about to do something new. In verse 18, the prior verse, it says, do not remember the past events, pay no attention to the things of old. I believe it goes hand in hand that in order to get something new that God has for us, we have to remember something important and that's forget the past. That in the following chapter of Genesis 18, two angels of the Lord show up to Abraham, three men and one of them being the Lord. And the Lord reiterated to Abraham, He said, by this time next year, your wife Sarah is going to have a baby. And Genesis 18, verse 30, it says, But the Lord asked Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh? He said. She said, Can I really have a baby when I'm old? And God said, Is anything impossible for the Lord? At the appointed time, I will come back to you, and in about a year, she will have a son. See, the reason why Sarah laughed is because she had a 90 year pass telling her it would never be done. How many times in our life, when we get an inkling or a desire that God wants to do something new, maybe God is on the brink of doing something new and we laugh at what God wants to do because we have a 20 year pass or a 10 year pass saying, it can't be done. That Sarah had a 90 year pass of barrenness saying it can't be done, yet a God who says it will be done. So the Lord said, name your son Isaac, because the name Isaac means laughter. Because the Lord said to Sarah, I never want you to forget that when you see your son Isaac, that you would laugh at the lack of faith you had for the promise I was giving you. How many times do you have a past telling you no? Yet the reality is Sarah had to realise that even though there was 90 years of no, that no had to bow to the name of Jesus. Amen. And point number two, if the team could come, that would be tremendous, is see the future. See the future. You know, the Lord appeared to Abraham and Sarah a second time because He wanted them to see the future. When our past becomes the dominant voice in our life, we'll never step into the plans that God has for our future. God who is all-knowing, God who is all-powerful, God who is ever-present, God who knows your future and who has a plan for your life, we realise that His plan is perfect. We realise that His timing is perfect. His motive and His heart of love is for your good. See, if we cannot perceive the future, His reality, you'll miss what God has in store for you because we'll simply laugh at our future like Sarah and say it can't be done. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come, the old has gone, the new is here. Walt Disney, the very man that we could appreciate for Disney, was fired from his job because he was told that he lacked imagination. Can you imagine that? The creator, the CEO of Disney, that the movies, everything that we are so entertained was fired from his first job because he, he, he was told that you lack imagination. If he had focused on what he was told, there would be no Disney Corporation and no Disney theme parks today. Colonel Sanders was 62 years old with $105 and he started a chain called Fried Chicken with his signature recipe that we still love today. And we all said, Amen. And after 1,009 rejections, he worked a deal with a restaurant in Utah and the Kentucky Fried Chicken franchise was born. How amazing that at 62 years of age, with $105 to his name, Colonel Sanders started KFC. Thomas Edison, invented the light bulb and he is quoted for saying, I haven't failed. I've just found 10,000 ways that don't work. I love that. How many times Thomas Edison failed to create the light bulb? And when he was asked about his failures, he said, I haven't failed. I just found 10,000 ways to not create a light bulb. I wonder what 2024 would 
hold for all of us. If we let go of what has been, maybe we hold on to what God is saying. That we don't just keep asking God for will God improve my life? Improve my discipline and to improve my desire for the things of God, but rather we would say, God, give me a new desire. God, give me a new appetite. Give me a new name, a new season, a new identity. Give me an awakening. Give me new eyes to see. Give me new ears to hear. Give me a new heart that breaks for what breaks yours. But many times we like to come in God with an improvement. Well, God, I... I want to read my Bible more, but just give me a little improvement. Well, God, I I, I want to love more Your people, but just give me a little bit of improvement. Rather than saying, God, give give me a new heart. Give me a new way to see. Give me, give me something new. See, many times we miss what God is doing because we say God is doing a new thing. Isaiah 43, 19 says, do not perceive it, I'm about to do something new. And many times we miss what God is gonna do this year in 2024 because we think God is doing a new thing. And many times we can't see it because we're looking for an old thing, thinking, well, God, you're gonna do a new thing and an old thing. But the reality is God is gonna do a new thing and a new thing in a new season, in a new way. And you say, God, you're gonna bring back that person or that opportunity or that, what I'm wanting. And God says, I'm not bringing back an old thing. I'm not remodelling, I'm doing something new. And many times we think, well, you know, God, if you could bring back that person's salvation because they're doing it over there, not realising that maybe God is doing something new. God said to Joshua 3, verse 4, when He crossed the Jordan and went to the Promised Land, He said, yes, Joshua, I understand you went to the Promised Land before when you spied it out. And Joshua said, but you've never been this way before. You went in as spies and you're going in in now as conquerors. And God said to Joshua, you've never been this way. And Joshua said, I've been here, but God was saying, you came as a spy, but you're going in as a conqueror. And if you approach 2024 like you approach 2023, you won't move forward in the season because you're waiting for the new thing of an old mentality, not realising that God doesn't do a new thing in an improved mentality. And my last point is this, it's confess it. Your future is on the tip of your tongue. Your future is on the tip of your tongue. If you don't confess it, if you don't speak it, if you don't start speaking that into being, you'll never see it. And there's a reason why God came back a second time to Abraham and Sarah. Because He wanted them to see the future. Because that first time Sarah laughed. She laughed, it can't be done. I'm 90. Abraham's a hundred. Sixty years we've been married. In sixty years we've never had children. And Sarah laughed. And God came back a second time, not to tell them the same story, but He came back a second time so they could see the future. Because God said, I want you to confess it. I want you to realise this is real. Isaiah 55, 11 says, So shall my word be that goes from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I pursue and shall succeed in the thing for which I sent it. Your future is on the tip of your tongue. That what you speak has the power to change your life for good or for bad. What you speak over your life, what you speak over people, what you confess, what you think, what you say. 
God says, if you have the courage to say it, if you can discern it, if you can declare it, if you can confess it, if you know it and recognise it, then you'll see it. And I wanna leave us with this thought. As we approach 2024 and what God wants to do, in for me preparing this message, Coming into this year, I I was sort of speaking, God, I just want You to improve things, improve the business, improve this. And coming over this message and and speaking this message, I had a different realisation of God, I just want You to do something new. Blow my mind, do something completely new. Think outside the box, God, just, I don't wanna limit God this year. I don't wanna refrain God this year. I don't wanna just place God in a box and think God only work in this limitation. But this year I'm saying, God, just do whatever You wanna do. Exceed my box, exceed my thought, exceed what You've done. Do what I thought You could never dream possible. Do you know where the world changes are? You know where the ones that will do what you could only dream of, the ones that you know that this year they'll do what you could just dream or imagine. Do you know where the world changes are? They're where God is going to be, not where He was. And that's when we need to be. Not where God has been, but where God is going to be. That when God moved in a nation, we don't just go to the nation because that's where God was, we go where God is gonna be. God, I thank You what You've done, but I'm stepping into where You're gonna be. God, I thank You for everything I've achieved, but I'm gonna step into where You're gonna land. Can we close our eyes, bow, bow our head? Holy Spirit, I just thank You for today. God, I thank You that new is not improved. God, I pray that tonight that we all would have the realisation to dream big, to ask, to believe, to have faith, to not give up praying for a loved one who's gone away from God, to not grow weary in doing good, that if there's anything that we could take from Genesis and Abraham and Sarah, is that God is not limited to age, but God is limited to our availability to believe and ask. If you're in the room tonight and this message has just spoken to you and and I just feel in the room to draw a line in the sand, that you say, Josiah, this year, I'm gonna dream big dreams. I'm not gonna ask for an improvement, I'm gonna ask for a new. If you say, Josiah, that's me, just where you are, just stand up. Not to embarrass you, but I really believe that there's gotta be a line drawn in the sand between you and God. That you say, God, this year, I'm taking the limitations off. I'm not believing for an improved marriage, I'm believing for a new marriage. I'm not believing for an improved mindset, I'm believing for a new mindset. I'm not believing for just a new year, I'm believing for the greatest year yet. And you're in the room tonight and you said, Josiah, that's me, just where you are, without embarrassing you, just stand. I'm not gonna embarrass you, I'm not gonna ask you to come down the front, I just want you to draw a line in the sand to say, God, this year, I want you to do something new. Just in this moment, just ask God. And if you don't know, just ask Him. Say, God, what do you wanna do this year? Maybe you haven't even contemplated the year. The music plays just for a moment. Just ask God. 
God, what do you want from me this year? What do you want to do? What kind of boss do you want me to be? What kind of husband? What kind of wife? What kind of father? So just allow the music to just prophesy. Holy Spirit, just move. If you feel God speaking to you and you're not standing, just stand. This is just between you and God, that's it. It's between you and God. It's between you and God. Last but not least, if you're in the room tonight and you said you say, I'm not walking with God or you've walked away from God. And maybe tonight as you came tonight, you just sense the presence of God in your life. And, and maybe you sense something that you can't explain. Maybe it's just in music or this message that you just sense the peace of God in your life. And you said, Josiah, God's speaking. And if you feel uncomfortable and you feel something that I wanna remind you and tell you that's God. It's the Holy Spirit. And He comes like the wind and He comes and He just wants to rest upon your life. He's not gonna force Himself on you. He comes as an invitation. You're not a puppet that's controlled by God, but rather He comes in this gentleness as the stillness like the wind. We can't see it, but we, we sense it and we can see it moving. And you're in the room tonight and said, Josiah, that's me. I've walked away from God. And, and maybe this you, you've done some things, said some things and this is a new year. And maybe on the start of 2024, you just feel God saying, I just feel in the room, someone saying, I just need a clean slate. I need a fresh start. It's a new year. I need a fresh beginning. And that's you. And you just want to come clean before God and say, God, this is my year. Just where you are on the count of three, raise your hand. I don't want to embarrass you. I just know that God's calling someone right now that you've said some things, you've done some things and you just want a clean start. You want to set 2024 to be a year of new beginnings of something new. And on the count of three, just where you are, raise your hand. Why? Because one, your life will never ever be the same. Two, God loves you so much that He would die on the cross for the sake of your life, that whenever you make a sin or a mistake, that you can come before God and be set free. Why? Because God paid the ultimate price because your life matters. And three, if that's you and you said, you're sorry, that's me, I walked away from God. I need God or you want God in your life. Just where you are, raise your hand and I'll pray with you. I don't wanna embarrass you. I don't wanna do anything, but this is between you and God. Just raise your hand nice and high. 